They call it the Asus Zephyrus G14, a color accurate, thin and light all aluminum laptop that packs as much of a punch as a full PC build. Now the question is, did they solve the thermal issues from the previous generation? We're going to jump into the thermal performance and real world benchmarks in just a minute, but first let's check out the build quality and usability of this laptop. It opens and closes smoothly with one hand, and as you open the laptop, it slightly raises the keyboard deck off of the table, which allows for really nice ventilation through the chassis. Now, one thing I really like about this laptop is as you're getting near the shut point of the lid, it magnet shut. This is really nice because you're not having to worry about this screen, you know, just kind of flopping or popping open in your backpack as you're commuting. It is a really good good build choice on Asus part. Now, another thing I really like is the very nice rounded machined edges. This laptop is so smooth. It is so well built. I like how the edge of the top cover extends down all around and then wraps towards the screen as well as the keyboard deck. So if you look, I'm going to open up the laptop real quick. And as you see, this keyboard deck completely wraps around all the way till it attaches to the bottom of the chassis here. And that edge right there is very smooth. There's no sharp edges. I really like how this laptop is put together. Really, no matter really where you touch the laptop, except uh, maybe right here, but I mean, that's not even sharp. And I'm literally having to like reach in and reach around to try and get to that edge. And that's not even that sharp compared to some other laptops that I've reviewed. Overall, Asus has done a fantastic job putting this laptop together. As mentioned in the intro, this is a CNC all aluminum laptop. As I close the lid and go ahead and apply some pressure to the top cover, you can see there's very little screen flex on the top cover. As I open it up and reach between the trackpad and the keyboard deck, I'm gonna apply some pressure here. And if I just apply normal pressure, you see there's very little flex on the top of the keyboard deck. Now, if I push really hard, I can get it to flex a little bit, but that is being very aggressive. Now, along here, I anticipated because this rises off of the table a little bit that I would get some flex in this area. But as I apply pressure here, you see there's very little flex which is impressive. Also, our standard screen flex test, see if the screen bows at all between each side. There's a little bit of screen flex there, but this is such a thin and light screen, as you can see. I'm really not too concerned with that. I'm not concerned that the build quality or the usability is gonna be affected by that screen flex. Now, another thing to point out is the two hinge configuration. It's very solid. And as you go ahead and push down here, there's very little screen flex there as well. So it's put together very well. Concerning the ports on the left side panel, we have our power supply input, HDMI, USB type C, and mic headphone jack. Now do note, as far as that USB-C is concerned, Ryzen has yet to give us Thunderbolt compatibility. On the right side panel, we have USB type A, two of those, and another USB type C. Now getting into the keyboard, one thing I'd like to point out is I love the function keys on this keyboard. I think there is an excellent use case going on here. You can quickly toggle to airplane mode, put your computer to sleep, choose the way that your screens display to multiple displays, obviously control your brightness, but then a few more standout features that I really like are the snippet tool quickly accessed right from the keyboard deck, just like that. You can control the different fan modes, so I can drop my computer into silent or go into performance or turbo mode. Control the pattern of the backlighting and then also control the brightness. Move up one level, you have your audio preferences and then I can quickly launch my ROG control center right from the keyboard deck, which is great for jumping into power saving mode, lighting, fan, etc. As we're making our way through this video, do note that I'm not gonna mention the price because they are subject to change, but if you're curious about the live pricing and availability, you can head down in the description below and click that link. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. So the keyboard is nice. It doesn't have that complete soft touch immersive feel like on the HP Omen that I love so much, but the keys do not feel cheap. It does not have a numpad, which for me is totally fine. I'm not a gamer, so that's not a preference of mine, um, but the firm snappy key press is excellent. There's a little bit of keycap wobble, which for me, I could do without, but it will not hurt the longevity or build quality of your computer. Moving down to the trackpad, though I just praised the Asus control center button, I would honestly prefer if those keys were removed. Maybe the power button was put onto the keyboard deck somewhere inside of the key uh, selection. 
and if the keyboard was moved up slightly to allow for a larger trackpad. The trackpad's great, um, it has a good click, it's secured to the chassis very well. There's no shakiness or clankiness to it, um, but I would just prefer that it would be a little bit bigger um, for my personal preference. Now, regarding the speakers, the speakers are fantastic because not only do you have audio speakers on the top of the keyboard deck, but also along the bottom cover right here. So it creates a very nice immersive audio experience, which I will test for you right now. If you're enjoying this video and getting some value, then ever so gently press down on that like button because it actually keeps my coffee warmer and I appreciate that. One of the standout features that makes this laptop so good for video editors, designers, and photographers is the screen. It's got great brightness and it can reach 100% sRGB color gamut range while also having a low Delta E for good color accuracy. Match that with the performance, build quality, and price point of this laptop and you have an insane winner for creative professionals. Regarding the webcam, there is none. Let's jump into the thermal performance before we get into the real world benchmarks. And as you can see, you have a large vent along the back of the chassis on each of the side panels, as well as on the bottom of the chassis. Now there's going to be a fan here and a fan here. And you'll see that when we open up the laptop really quickly to check out the upgrade path. And then your coils are going to run through the center. One disappointment, uh, and I would say downfall of this computer is pretty well known fact that you can only swap one of the RAM positions, which would make it the max RAM ability of this computer 40 gigs, roughly. If you put a 32 in uh, with the 8, you get 40. A simple upgrade is going to be from uh, 16 to 24 if you put a 8 and a 16 gig RAM. Um, and then you also have, I'm not going to tear that up because uh, it's nice and organized. You also have an M.2 drive here, and again, just one M.2, so this is not an expansive laptop. And, you know, the reason being is they've put a lot into this little package. We have our 76 watt hour battery speakers right here. We have our uh, dual fan setup right here, which is nice, the full heat pipe. So there's good ventilation on the bottom cover behind the chassis and on each side panel, but how did that fare as far as thermal performance is concerned? Well, I'm happy to see that this year's model got about 10 degrees cooler than the previous generation, which is a big difference. And so that's why I would say it is worth going with this new model if you don't want the thermal issues, because so far through my tests, I've seen that they've been able to resolve them. Now, during the export out of the free version of DaVinci Resolve, I still saw fairly poor thermal performance. And this is really because the free version of DaVinci Resolve does not utilize as much of the GPU. And so all of the work is getting put onto the CPU. So if you're going to be using the free version of DaVinci Resolve, I would not recommend this laptop based on the thermal performance. If you're going to be using the paid version, you're going to get better GPU acceleration, which will then lighten the load on the CPU and give you better thermal performance in that program. Now do note that the model I'm using here in this review is the Ryzen 9 5900HS with the RTX 3060 from NVIDIA, 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. In the simulated benchmarks, the Ryzen processor matched with that new RTX 3060 really crushes it in Cinebench and it gets pretty good to scores in Geekbench near the top of the charts. If you're considering this laptop for 3D modeling, you're gonna be in one of the top spots during all of my tests, except for SolidWorks, because SolidWorks really benefits from a Quadro workstation GPU rather than the GeForce gaming GPUs that you see here in the Asus Zephyrus G14. If you're a big After Effects user, this computer is perfect. It nailed the top spot on my chart, beating out all the laptops over the past year. At full quality playback in Premiere Pro, the laptop dropped zero drop frames out of the 16,177 in the project. And in DaVinci Resolve, I saw smooth playback as well, though there's no drop frame indicator, so I don't know if there were any drop frames. Now, regarding the export time, both DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro have very good export times, really sitting nicely on the charts. If you're considering this laptop for Photoshop, I definitely recommend it. Even with just 16 gigs of RAM, it scores an 804 on my benchmark charts. If you're to upgrade the RAM to 24 or 40 gigs of RAM, you get an 860, which beats out my top performing laptop on the channel, or a 921 with 40 gigs of RAM. So this is a great choice for Photoshop and other design-focused tools. 
Not only does this laptop run cooler, but it's also quieter than the previous generation as well. It runs about 10 decibels quieter on all the tests. When last year we saw about 61 decibels during the 4K exports out of DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro, this year we're seeing about 52 decibels. In Photoshop, about 40 to 52 decibels depending on the intensity of the task. And during web browsing, about 35 decibels, unless you click it into silent mode, and then at that point it drops down and you don't have any fan noise. Especially at idle, no fan noise. Because we're seeing about a 10 to 15% increase in performance over the previous generation, the really big win for this laptop is much better thermal performance. So if you don't mind a warmer laptop and maybe a little louder fan noise, then last year's model could be a good pick for you. But if you want that cooler and quieter laptop than the latest Ryzen 5900HS and RTX 3060 equipped Asus Zephyrus G14 is gonna be the pick for you. There's affiliate links in the description below if you're curious about the exact live pricing and availability of this laptop. And if you do make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. And that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. If you want more videos like this one, click or tap the screen over here. Otherwise, keep editing, keep designing, keep creating. My name is Benji Kaiser, and I'll see you here in the next video.